Okay, let's talk about our patient today. Our patient today is a dentist. Young lady, a preeminent lecturer. A dental hygienist from Bulgaria. Buffalo, New York. Atlanta, Oklahoma, Vancouver, Canada, Boston, Kansas City, San Francisco, Montreal, Munich, Germany, London, and Santa Maria, California. Now we're going to place 14 lumineers, 8 lumineers, 10 lumineers, 6 lumineers, 10, 2, 8, 8, 10, 10, 8, 10, 8 lumineers today on our patient. And now we're not treating teeth anymore. We're treating smiles. Isn't that beautiful? So let's look at the transformation from where we started and where we are. Our patient today is an example of that. I've been doing these for over 20 years, getting close to 25. To date, I have never given one patient a single injection for lumineers. Your two most reliable surfaces that you can bond to are porcelain and enamel. It's that simple. So think of it this way that uh, there's a rule of 55 and uh, there's five surfaces and there's five steps. And so anything that you encounter in the patient's mouth, you can take care of within that paradigm. Before we get started, we want to be prepared. And so uh, uh, just before you take off in an airplane, why they have a checklist that says, uh, did you check for the gas cap? Did you check your wheels? Did you check your flaps and things like that? And uh, there's nothing really intellectually challenging. It's just that little things you should not forget to do. Let's take a look at what Lisa has done on the tray here. Everything that looks complicated, but it's not. Here's the pieces of porcelain. They're a little faded in there, but they're there. And Lisa has treated them with a solution called Serenade Porcelain Conditioner. And the other one is Serenade Prime. So it's an organic acid that's placed on there. They've already been pre-etched with hydrofluoric acid in the studio. And then she does the surface treatment just before we're going to create the silene bond. And then the impression material. You want to use the same type of impression that you use for Invisalign. So it's very sharp. We recommend the Lumineers impression material because you get really sharp margins around the gingiva. If you're going to work on patients without anesthesia, you need four power magnification. What you get with four power magnification is you get to visually see as if you were virtually be three inches from the surface of the tooth. And we'll turn it sideways a little bit. I'll put the cheek retractor in there a little bit later. She has some tetracycline stain, and I'm not sure if we're going to use block out or not. And there's that porcelain crown on that second bicuspid. We'll probably use a little block out, I know, on that first bicuspid with that amalgam. That's pretty gray, so for sure we'll put block out on that. Okay, so we'll take the micro etcher and do a little sandblasting here. Okay. Okay. And you can use any brand of micro etcher that you want. And one of the other challenges you're going to have as I'm looking in there really close is you can see that metal margin. And uh, I know right now that probably all your patients that have porcelain fused to metal crowns that have been in there for five years, 98% of them have metal margin showing. What we're going to do is create a little trough in there with a, a small round diamond. And Lisa's already put the diamond in. And create a little space. And once again, you shouldn't feel anything. If you do, you raise your left hand right away and I'll stop. A little water here. Now we never put burrs on teeth. We put diamonds on teeth. What I want to do is get the metal away from behind the porcelain. So then when I create a trough, I can put an opaquer in there and mask that dark discoloration. Now the next thing we're going to do is simplify this whole process and put on paint on dental dam. Now in case you're wondering what I'm doing with this is uh, it looks like 
I'm injecting something, but it's really paint on dental dam that we use when we do chair side whitening. And we put this on the lingual side of the teeth, but you want to be sure that you don't let it close your eyes. Now the best way to protect your eyes is to close them. Of course, the patient doesn't have to close if you've got it in the back of their mouth. I want to have this solidified to a rubbery stage. And wherever I put this, it will enable the removal of the ultrabond on the lingual side. So she has a diastomy between those centrals and the distal of the laterals and the cuspids. So instead of putting it just up right away, close your eyes. Three seconds, about a half inch from the surface is all you need to do. If you put too much on and it goes from the lingual to the labia, when you try to seat your luminaire, why it will prevent it from seating. And you do this before you do any surface treatment to the teeth. Close your eyes. Okay. Now let everybody see what we've done here before we start surface preparation. Now wherever we have that uh, paint on dental dam, when the ultrabond goes on those prepared surfaces, it won't stick to the underside of that and it'll help clean it up very quickly. If you sharp march, you get to see the benefit of that right at the end there. Now the first thing we're going to do is put a little porcelain on this bicuspid. Not much, just a little. Porcelain is hydrofluoric acid. I don't know, I think it's 3% buffered. And you want to be very careful using it. Here we just wash it off. Ready? So remember, we've micro etched. Then we put porcelain on. And now we're putting on porcelain conditioner. What is porcelain conditioner? Porcelain conditioner is citric acid, and we put that on first before we put on the serenade prime, which is inactive silane, and it's the porcelain conditioner, the organic acid, that kicks it off. Now I'm using etch and seal. Etch and seal, as you see, is a medium viscosity. It also contains aluminum oxalate. See how we do that? We just push it around. It stays where you place it. And if I were using this in regular operator procedures and I had exposed dentin, then the aluminum oxalate would seal the dental tubules. So now we're going to put serenade prime on her teeth. Now we're putting tenure AB on, right? Yeah. <laughs> tenure AB was developed by Ray Bowen. And uh, I don't know how many of you know Ray Bowen, but he had developed uh, composites and he developed the concept of the air rotor and did a lot of things. And he came up to me one time at the ADA meeting in uh, Atlanta, and he said, you know, Bob, I got this fantastic dentin bonding agent, but it has nine steps to it. And so he said, I can't get anybody to do anything with it. So he licensed it to us, or the American Dental Association did. And we got it down to two steps and finally got it down to two solutions that you mix together. So you just have to apply one. And it works like a charm. We've been working with it for over 20 years. And I'm amused with all these manufacturers. They're always coming out with new and improved. But new and improved doesn't always bond everything or they're light dependent. No matter which bonding system or composite you, you use, tenure works and you don't have to use a light to make it effective. Okay. And now I guess we're ready to do a couple of try-ins here. 
left central. Lisa always calls out the name of the tooth. Here we go. And we're going to use the Ultramon try-in paste. So first thing we're going to do is see what it looks like without anything in it. So we can take a look at her tooth now. The try-in paste is uh, the same as Ultrabond paste, except it doesn't have any activators in it. That's the big difference. Right, Central? Okay. But I always tell them it's really not a hot plate. It's just our slang, and so don't worry. You gently slip these over. Now, I want you to... Ask yourself, why do those two veneers, those lumineers, that are the same shade look different? And that illustrates the importance of using the try-in paste. Because light, when it goes through a medium, always continues to go forward until the critical angle is exceeded. Then it stops going forward and it bounces back. That's just an optical phenomenon. So what happens on the tooth on her left, on her left central, the light goes through till it gets to, what, the edge surface. Then it encounters air. Then it bounces back off of the edge surface. So the shade that we're looking at without the try-in paste in is the shade of the luminaire with the etched porcelain on there, the opacification. When we put on the ultrabond, what shade ultrabond try-in is that? B0. B0 on the tooth on the right. That's what this will look like after we bond it. So when you do these try-ins, if you don't have the try-in paste, you can really have some problems. Now we're going to give the patient a mirror so she can see dr the dramatic change that's taken place in the appearance of her teeth with those two. See how much lighter they are, even this one? You like this one or this one? You like the one on the right looks more natural? Okay. So now what we're going to do is Lisa's taking out the Ultrabond try-in paste from the two veneers. And I'm putting 10-year S on the surface of all the teeth, and I'm removing the Ultrabond try-in paste on those two centrals with 10-year S. This is really the critical time in here now because you've got surface preparation. You want to keep it clean and dry by putting the 10-year S on. You put resin on the surface before contamination gets to it. Whoever gets there first, either the resin or the uh, contamination wins the race. And I always like to win the race with resin. Which one? Left central. Left central. Thank you. And we're using what shade on this? B0 on the Ultrabond. Right, central? Okay. Give me a little tetra pig uh, to use in that trough. You may have a little trouble seeing this far back in here. I apologize for that. But I'm putting some tetra pig pink in that trough. on that second bicuspid that's a porcelain fused to metal crown. And this is where four power magnification is critical. We're going to remove a lot of the excess. And we're going to take the two millimeter tip for one second. And I think I'm going to start over here on this right second bicuspid Close your eyes. The best way to correct, to protect your eyes is to close them. So I gently place the two millimeter tip for, and expose it for one second. And I close my eyes for that one second. So I get it placed and I close my eyes and then I push down on the button. And that prevents this from slipping around. Now, sometimes they like to take the light and wave it all around the area and partially polymerize the bonding material. 
I don't like that because once you start polymerization, you want to carry it through to completion. And I didn't do that step on that left lateral. See, I cured this left central one second, one millimeter, but I didn't touch this because I want to keep that light away from there. The problem you have if you do one or two of these at a time and then you have to clean up and sometimes you get some resin on the adjacent tooth and it prevents seeding of the veneer and it can really add a lot of time and inconvenience and it makes things from not happening just right. If you just get these on, they all fall into place and then set them. So this is like going down the runway right now. Okay, and you want everything to fall into place and you don't want to be doing a lot of corrective actions once you're on the runway. Once you fire that firewall at throttle, it's not time to have second thoughts. If you have second thoughts, it's before you do the firewalling of the throttle. Once you got your pedal to the metal, you're on your way. And we have tenure ass on the brush. You could also use a visor seal on there too. Close your eyes. Okay, let's take a look at the lingual side here. Open, and I'll give you a peek at that. And remember, we had tenure S on there. So once you start putting these in, the tenure S starts going to work on causing this to polymerize even before you get the light there. So you don't want to do a try-in and find out you got the wrong shade and have already applied tenure S to the teeth. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let's let everybody take a look at the lingual side just before I start polymerizing because we're not going to polymerize from the lingual unless we see what that looks like back there. Okay, so that's why you've got the uh, paint on dental dam in there. And we're going to put five seconds on each tooth. Close your eyes for two reasons. One is five seconds is all you need. And if you leave it on for more than five seconds, it begins to get too hot on the tissue. So five seconds is the maximum, and probably I could get by with three seconds. Close your eyes. And close your eyes. Okay, guess what? We're off the runway and wheels are up. <laughs> so now we can have coffee, we can ask questions, we can take this, uh, well, I'll take uh, the paint on dental dam out first and then I'll take that out of your mouth. So there we go. And I'm using a Sure 349 to lift the paint on dental dam out. So all we're going to do for the next 10 or 15 minutes is some very boring things of smoothing and blending the ultra bond, the porcelain, and the tooth structure all together. And what, what I'm using here, uh, so that you'll all know, is I'm using all the instruments that we put together in a finishing kit. What I'm using is the football-shaped, American football-shaped diamond with my four power magnification. And now I've got direct vision going into the second bicuspid on the upper left-hand side. But visually, I'm only three inches from the teeth. And I'm blending the porcelain and the ultrabond and the tooth structure all together. I'll let you take a look at that in just a moment. And one of the reasons you don't want to use the white paint on dental dam is it blends in with the ultrabond and it's difficult, to, it's impossible to visually distinguish it. This is a 12 fluted burr. And I'm not putting it on the teeth. I'm putting it all around where I've got ultrabond on, on the porcelain. Don't put burrs on unanesthetized teeth or your patients will go through the ceiling. So we always use diamonds and a lot of light feather touch and water spray when we're touching teeth or getting close to touching teeth with the instruments. But I'm using a 12-fluted burr here because it will 
cut the ultra bond, but it won't cut the porcelain. Now what I want to do in the beginning is get rid of the excess ultra bond after it's set. Now a lot of people say, well, why don't you clean that up before it gets set? Well, when I used to clean it up once in a while, but not very often, I dislodge a veneer, not knowing it, thinking I had just the right amount there, and then the patient would come back with stains underneath. So what I'm doing right now is a 12 fluted burrs, defining each tooth individually with the excess ultra bond being removed. And this is another important time when four power magnification, I believe, is critical because I can get right in there and see without uh, touching the gingival tissue. I always thought it was interesting when they taught us how to anesthetize a tooth and then you'd rely on tactile sense to determine when you were in enamel and dentin. And tactile sense is how blind people see. So, <laughs> I mean, if we give up that sensory system, we lose a lot of benefit when you're doing cosmetic dentistry for your patients. Now, the only thing that is different between bonding to uh, porcelain than it is to enamel is that on your porcelain bond, you want to wait 24 hours for it to mature. So we don't try to open contacts on porcelain, to, uh, porcelain veneers to porcelain surfaces because I've done that and all too often I will pull one of them off and that's a very sad feeling when I was trying to open the embrasure and I was using too much force and I pulled the veneer off. But if you wait 24 hours, they almost never, well they never have come off after I waited 24 hours. Okay. Now we'll take a uh, long narrow diamond and I'll further define the interproximals. Now if you think back, we had a little diastema between these two centrals, didn't we? So we want to be careful we don't open these embrasures too much. Can you get toward me now? A bit more, that's good. And since we didn't have a since we didn't have a shoulder on the teeth, we've got a shoulder now in the porcelain. So what I'm doing is removing that shoulder so that we'll have a seamless blending of the porcelain to the tooth. Now I'm using the Sure 349 instrument to scrape off. See see how the ultra bond comes off? Let's take a quick look at what we've done so far before we go around to getting rid of the bevels on all of the uh, margins, the edges of it. There she is before. Now let's give them a big smile. Just a little bit. Big smile. Okay. And I'm going to take that uh, right central. And I'm just going to shorten that just a little bit. And you can do this after you've, there we go, after you've bonded. Now let's check the occlusion. Close. See that right here? If I let that patient go home this way, she'll fracture that. So now we know we're going to go back and take care of that overlap two ways. Okay. And one way is we're going to work in smoothing this area, and then we're going to look at the opposing dentition. Now gently close on your back teeth. Open. And she's got prematurity down here on the side, so we're not going to shorten the tooth. We're going to take it off the labial. I'll use the uh, 
football shaped diamond and just take off the labial surface. And then we'll go to the lingual and we'll blend this in here like that. Okay. Open. Close. Look how nice those teeth look. It's all done for me. All I had to do is sit back and put these in. Grind around. Open. Let's see what we've got. Still hitting a little heavy on that lower anterior. And I'm hitting a little heavy on that central. So I'm going to take some more off there. And a little on the lower. Vacuum. Try to pull your tongue back if you can. Now, I'm going to show you how to open these contacts. Because remember, they're not open, are they? And let's see if I've taken enough Ultrabond off. Open. So the first thing we're going to do is take the Seri saw which was developed by the clinician in New York, Dr. Harvey Putter. Sometimes we call it the Putter Cutter. But uh, today we call it the Seri Saw. And look how that went through. Look at that, how that just goes through. And that's because we have most of the Ultrabond removed. If we had a lot of Ultrabond there, you'd get a lot of force. So if you get a lot of force, then you just stop and rock it. But today these are really neat contacts for opening. Remember she had a little diastema there? Isn't that neat? So today we're opening almost all the contacts. It's very infrequent that I'll open all of the contacts on the placement visit because no matter what you do and how good it turns out, there's always more that can be done on a recall visit. And I'm starting to give a little pressure on these on you, aren't I? Up till now it was pretty gentle, wasn't I? Uh-huh, it's fine, okay. <laughs> but everybody wonders how you get these contacts open. And uh, it's so simple to do. Then we'll take the uh, Surrey Sander. And this is a safe-sided sander that uh, we use with diamond impregnated. Orthodontists use it a lot for opening embrasures, but and shortening teeth and things like that, or shortening the width of teeth. I just use it to go in after I've opened the contact with the seri sander, and I sort of, just a little bit there. Okay, open wide. This just smooths it so when we run the dental floss through, open. It won't uh, shred. Okay. So now you take floss. See how that just goes through like that? Nice and easy. And the contacts I don't open today, I'll open a week from now. Let's go back and use that needle nose diamond on those uh, shoulders. No matter how I try, I always miss something. I try not to. And I can pick it up on the second visit. She's been sitting in the chair now for how long? About an hour and a half. And I find after about an hour and a half, patients don't mind getting out of the chair. Then when they come in on the second visit, they're fresh, they're refreshed, and they're able to tell you how much they like what you've done, which is what they do 98% of the time. And all I had to do was not get in the way. I had to do create good occlusal harmony. I had to create good surface preparation. Put these in place with the Ultrabond, use the right materials, and we're all done. Would you like to take a look at that? Yes. Okay. 
for today. And then the patient comes back in a week, and that's where you do the final finishing. How's that look? Perfect, huh? Perfect. You like it? Did yeah. you think it looked this good? Nope. Nope. It looks great. Great, huh? Yeah. I actually have teeth. <laughs> What'd she say? She actually has teeth. Now you have teeth. That's right. You didn't show them before. No. Yeah. Uh -uh. Now you go around smiling at everybody, and you, you they'll think you're friendly, but all you're doing is showing them your teeth. Exactly. You just, yeah. Good. And just remember, you guys can do it, too. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. I had seen all the ads, and um, my teeth are very small, and they were spaced and not very white. And so I just thought the luminaires looked really pretty. I thought that would look really nice, and I'd have a better smile. It looks wonderful. It looks wonderful. I don't have the gaps between my teeth, and the color looks really natural, and I'm very happy with them. The procedure wasn't long. Um, I was uncomfortable laying there um, while he was working on them. I had absolutely no pain, and um, I mean, it just, it was an easy procedure, very easy. I can't believe that um, with no pain and the short time, you know, that I've had to be here, that they can make my teeth look so good. Anybody that, you know, wants to have a beautiful smile, that, that it's, and if they're afraid of dentists or they're afraid of pain or anything, that's something that they don't have to worry about with this.